I'm going to show you how to install our hydraulic front brake kit on an RXV electric. You want to jack the car up and remove the front wheels and tires and then remove the dust cover from the hub on both the driver and passenger side and then go ahead with a 15 16 socket remove the nut that's holding the hub on the car and then remove the hub from both sides of the car. To remove the tie rod ends from the spindles. You want to take off the cotter pin and then with a 17 millimeter wrench remove the nut that's holding the tie rod end. You want to save these for reinstallation. The tie rod out of the way with a 16 millimeter on top and 18 millimeter wrench on the bottom. You want to remove the king pin from the car which will allow you to remove your spindles from both driver and passenger side. You want to save these bolts for reinstallation. Now that you got the, the uh, spindles off the car, you want to remove the thrust washer from the top and the kingpin tube from the spindles. You want to save these on both the driver and passenger side. You're going to be using these in our new spindles. Now you want to install the stock kingpin tube into our spindle. You want to put a little grease on it before you do this. And then the stock thrust washer on top and then with the stock bolts, reinstall the spindles to the car on the, both the driver and passenger side. Now using the stock nut and cotter pin, reinstall the tie rod ends to the new spindles on both the driver and passenger side. On the driver's side, you need to remove the rockers and the rubber floor mat, which will expose the brake cover, and then pull out the plastic plugs from the brake cover and lift the brake cover off the car. Once you have the rubber cover off the, the gas pedal, it will allow you to remove the cover exposing the electric brake system. Relieve the pressure from the brake and using a 15 millimeter wrench, you want to back off the nut on the brake lever. Back this off about halfway. The snap ring from the clevis pin and then remove the clevis pin from the assembly. Number six Allen wrench, remove the four socket head cap screws from the assembly. Using a 10 millimeter wrench, remove the driver side bolt from the brake assembly. Just set the brake assembly off to the side because we have to drill a hole for our master cylinder. Now using a two inch hole saw, we're gonna drill a hole through the floorboard of the car. For a better view, you can see the hole that we drilled in the floorboard. You may need to trim it a little bit along the edge. This will allow us to put our master cylinder through the floorboard. Ready? Now we want to bring the master cylinder through the hole that you drilled and we're going to install the master cylinder mount using the supplied quarter by two bolts and lock nuts and the supplied spacer is going to go between the master cylinder and the mount. We're showing two, but the spacers we're going to make are just going to be one longer piece. You want to do this to both sides and then securely tighten. And this is want to show how it goes on. Now we want to install the supplied master cylinder slide onto the master cylinder. This will allow us to have brake adjustment, and we'll show you how to do that here a little later. Just to sit the stock pedal assembly back into the position. You want to loosely install using the stock socket screws just to the passenger side right now. This is going to allow you to line it up. Do not tighten at this time. Now we want to install the clevis with the flat portion going towards the front of the car to the adjuster into stock adjusting arm. Into the arm and then through the stock pedal assembly. And then you're going to put your washer, your snap ring washer and cotter pin on the back side. Now you need to install the snap ring as shown. And then once you get that in place, you also want to put your cotter pin in. Like shown. After we got the cotter pin bent and securely installing the snap ring, you want to slide the supplied lock washer on top of the aluminum block on the driver's side front portion 
and then loosely install the master cylinder mount with the stock bolts to the brake cable or the brake system assembly. Now that you have all the bolts in place and the brake system is lined up, you want to securely tighten all six bolts of the brake assembly. Using a number 15 wrench, you want to tighten the stock spring until the brake pedal comes back up against the stop. Once you have it against the stop, that's as far as you want to go. Now we're going to install our reservoir to the hose as shown. Then you want to slide the clip up and secure the hose to the reservoir. Now we're going to secure the reservoir to the frame upright on the top hole of the driver's side with the supplied wire tie. Okay, the next step is to install your DOT3 brake fluid. You have your second clamp on the hose. We got it pinched off not to let any air in the system. You're simply going to slide it through the hole, remove the cap, and then slide it onto the master cylinder without letting any air into the system. Now that you have the hose on the master cylinder, slide the clamp into place to secure the hose to the master cylinder as shown. Reinstall the cap to the reservoir and then with the supplied wire ties you want to secure the hose to the frame in the selected locations. Now we're going to install the wheel studs to the rotors using the 5 16 by 3 quarter bolt shake proof lock washer, the rotor and the wheel stud. Securely install the studs to both rotors securely tight. Now we got to remove the stock lugs from the hub and put the stock lug nuts back on as shown and tap the lugs out of the hub. Now remove the lug nuts which will allow you to pull the studs out of the hub. Now slide your stock hub onto the brake rotor assembly. Now we want to take and install the hub and rotor assembly onto the new spindle. Slide it on as shown and then using the stock nut, securely install with a 15 16th wrench and reinstall your dust cap to both the Now we're ready to install the calipers to the caliper mount. You want to remove the slide bolts from top and bottom and pull out the pads and then with the brake line to the inside and the line going up, you want to take your caliper and slide it into position. Put your brake lining to the inside of the rotor. Reinstall your top slide bolt. And then install your other side brake pad through the top. And reinstall your slide bolts to the bottom. Now with a 3 8 Allen wrench, securely and tighten your slide bolts both top and bottom, the driver and passenger side. You want to install your safety clips to the slider bolts, pushing down inside and then clipping it onto the slider bolt as shown. You can adjust the bias of the brakes if you want more front brake or less front brake. You simply loosen the jam nut and spin this back for more front brake or spin it in for less front brake and then remember to retighten your jam nut. Now we're going to show you how to adjust the brakes for more or less front brake. You're going to use a 16 millimeter to hold the adjuster and a 13 millimeter wrench to back off the jam nut. And then you can actually thread the adjuster you can run it towards the front of the car which will give you less front brake or if you run it towards the rear of the car it'll give you more front brake. Once you get it to the proper desired location you want to retighten the jam nut. 